Hi, everyone. I'm Vito Setiuk, a sales executive at CloudFresh, a Google Cloud uh, premium partner specializing in helping businesses implement and optimize Google Cloud solutions, including Looker as well, of course. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar. Uh, today, we will explore how you can transform your decision-making strategies by leveraging powerful data insights with Looker. So let's start. Firstly, here is a brief overview of our agenda for today. Uh, we will start with the quick intro from my side, and then Zuza, our data analytics specialist at Google Cloud, will dive, uh, will dive uh, into the essentials of Looker, including an introduction to the platform, common challenges it can address, and uh, compelling business cases. Next, we will then jump into a live demo showcasing how Looker empowers decision makers with actionable insights. You will see uh, firsthand how Looker can be used to track key metrics, align with uh, company goals, and tackle common data challenges. Charlize, customer engineer from um, Google Cloud, will cover this part. Closer to the end, uh, we will explore how CloudFresh support businesses in utilizing uh, Looker's full potential. You will learn about our services and benefits of partnering with us to drive success. And finally, uh, we will open the floor for a Q&A session where you can get answers for all of your questions about Looker and how it can benefit your organization. So now a quick intro from my side. As a, a global Google Cloud Premier Partner, we specialized in helping businesses of all sizes to get the most out of Google Cloud solution, including Looker. But our experience doesn't stop there. Uh, we are also proud partners with leading technology providers like Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, HubSpot, and Okta. This broad partnership ecosystem allows us to offer you a wide range of solutions tailored to your specific needs. And we offer a complete set of professional services for all of our partner products. Uh, this includes everything from initial testing, proof of concept, to training and ongoing support. We help you use AI efficiently and um, offer cost-effective solutions. One, one second. Yeah. Oh, too quickly. Uh, today we have a special offer for you. It's a free personalized uh, demo of Looker Core tailored to your needs from our tech experts. You are welcome to scan the QR code, fill out the quick form, and claim your offer. Also, as I mentioned at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session. Please put all your questions to the chat, and we will cover them at the end of the webinar. And people who ask the best two questions chosen by our speakers will receive some gifts, so please ask away everything you're interested in. And before we will move to the next slide, I just would like to make it a bit maybe more interactive and for me, Zuza, Charlize and our team, it's interesting just to understand who uh, already from our participants using Looker. So if you can please make some uh, action, so maybe some emoji into the chat who already using Looker Core or Please raise the hand, just for us to understand um, how many people already know about it. Great, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to see that so many people already know a bit about Looker. Hope today we will give for those of you who are already familiar with Looker additional value. I'm sure that it will be. So let's go. And now I'm happy to introduce Zuza, a data analytics specialist from Google Cloud. She's here to tell us 
all about Looker and challenges it can solve and how businesses use it. So Zuza, the stage is yours. Thank you, Vita. Thanks for introduction. So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Zuza and uh, together with Charles, um, today we're happy to introduce you to Looker. Um, so the content will be really a, a mix of a technical and a business value. So hope it appeals to everyone. So let's jump into it. Um, so uh, just to give you a heads up, today we'll be discussing a Looker platform or uh, alternatively, you can call it Looker Core, um, not Looker Studio. I think all you need to remember from this webinar is that uh, Looker platform is like a big brother of Looker Studio. And why? Let me tell you a bit further. So these are some of the customers that uh, we are working with. Um, so as you can see, we are present in different industries, uh, different companies. Um, and really what they have in common is the time when they decided uh, they need a really solid analytical tool to analyze their data. And they chose Looker platform. So uh, let me tell you maybe a bit more about how Looker was integrated into Google Family and what challenges it solves. So Google, so Looker was essentially a startup and it has been acquired by Google around five, five years ago. And uh, people keep on asking me, why did Google decide to, uh, to acquire uh, Looker and why uh, our customers uh, keep on uh, deciding to, to invest in Looker platform? Um, and I think it's worth looking at the challenges that Looker platform solves. So essentially, there are two key challenges that we typically see uh, in companies. So first one is data bottleneck. So I don't know how about you, but in uh, previous, previous companies, I had chance to um, work with some data. And sometimes I didn't have the data that I needed to have at the right time. So usually what happens is exactly that, that people are from different roles, from marketing, from sales, product, they need data. And they go to the analyst and they ask for that data. However, analyst in a company, it might be an analyst team, it might be a single person. Um, they are usually pretty swamped with work. They have a lot to do, a lot of dashboards to prepare. So these users uh, might just go and analyze data on their own, which creates a bit of a um, a data chaos, right? We have different spreadsheets. Uh, I personally had a situation when I had spreadsheet number 17 and uh, we ended up coming to the same meeting and having different numbers. So these are the key challenges that Looker is trying to solve. And how does it solve them? So this is uh, mainly thanks to its centralized architecture. So what does it mean? It's really divided. Uh, um, by these three pillars. So firstly, Looker connects directly to a SQL speaking database. So all of the data uh, stays in your database um, and Looker is just sort of working on that data. And this is um, possible thanks to the LookML language that is a markup for SQL. So it's kind of a translator of uh, SQL into, into human language. Um, so Looker is able to read what is in your uh, in your database, and it passes the visualization to the business user. So this guarantees that uh, the data we're looking at is consistent and it can be trusted, and it enables everyone in business, all of the business users, to self-serve with data without need uh, to ask the analysts uh, for a dashboard, okay? So this really empowers business users to just go use data uh, on their own. And later, I'll show you on an example on how exactly does it translates into business value. Um, the third pillar from a technical uh, sort of value perspective is that um, we are cloud agnostic. Um, so you can choose any SQL speaking database. Uh, of course, we, uh, we recommend BigQuery, that is a Google Cloud analytical database. However, you have the flexibility if you need it. Uh, to leverage any of the SQL speaking database. So uh, how does it look from architecture standpoint? And let me just click through this slide a bit. Uh, okay, so 
let me guide you on how does it look, uh, how does Looker work from architecture perspective. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, once we centralize all of our data sources within a SQL speaking database, Looker sits on top. And that blue box uh, that you see here on the picture is the semantic modeling layer of Looker. So here in that semantic modeling layer, you unify all of your metrics, uh, you set up permissioning so that person A doesn't see the same uh, data as person B, uh, perhaps we need different permissions in a company. It's version controlled, so all of the changes are automatically pushed into Git. And this ensures that um, people can collaborate. Uh, so whenever there is something that maybe you need to change in the tool, uh, all of the changes are safe, so you can track whatever was changed. And then it's also whenever someone maybe changes uh, the team, um, the next person can just pick it up very easily. Um, Looker is a secure tool, uh, so essentially it doesn't store any data. It, uh, it sort of inherits your database permissions and it's 100% cloud. Uh, so essentially, whenever a business user builds a dashboard, they can just uh, share a link with someone else and say, hey, look at the data uh, I have found. Um, this looks interesting. Let's work on it together. Um, and so speaking of business users, I think Integrate Insights is the section that uh, business users like the most. Why is that? Um, we have a couple, um, couple of options that really enable business users to use more of that data in the company. What does it mean? We can uh, schedule a delivery of a report to someone's inbox. So essentially, we have a very important meeting every Wednesday. Five minutes before that meeting, a report can just come automated into our inbox uh, and no one has to prepare it. It has a fresh data on it. Then dynamic alerts. Uh, I like to say that people usually log into BI tools um, whenever um, something is sort of burning in the company. So dynamic alerts are there to actually uh, show you that you don't need to log in every time because Looker can sort of track a business pulse um, for you. So whenever some metric falls below a certain threshold, we can just get an alert, automated alert that goes into the inbox and tells us, hey, you should act on it. Um, we can also have um, Looker data inside our platform. So let's say you have some sort of CRM platform and you want to see how are your customers um, spending, let's say, you can have a Looker dashboard embedded within that platform. So this is mostly the internal sort of part of Looker, but we also have possibility of uh, externalizing data with Looker, which Charles will, sh will also show you during the demo later uh, and a bit of examples on how we work with our customers. But essentially what you need to remember is that you can build a data product with Looker. So whenever um, there is any analytics that you need to share with your customers, you can do that with Looker. And I'll show you on uh, some of the next slides on how we did it with one, one of our customers. So this is the architecture standpoint. Uh, and I'm sure you, you kind of wonder, how does it look like in real life? So these are some of the internal analytics ca use cases uh, that I chose. And I chose retail companies because I feel like everyone kind of know what retail companies do uh, and, and how their business model looks like. So let me tell you about some of them. Uh, so for example, Glossier, it's a company uh, with cosmetics. Um, so they are an e-commerce company uh, selling different, different types of products. Um, so what we particularly help them with um, is to spot trends in how their customers are returning products. Um, so really the, the goal here was to re alleviate churn that they had. And what they did with Looker is that um, they have set up an alert um, when a particular product was returned. Um, and then it actually turned out that one of the products that was very frequently returned has been exchanged, not returned. So then uh, drilling down into their data, they understood that simply a picture uh, on their page of a lipstick of a particular shade was just wrong. So people would exchange it. And um, without that data that was sort of uh, enabling, sending them alerts about that frequent uh, return and that sort of pattern, 
uh, in their customer data, they wouldn't be able uh, to spot this with just human eye. So we help them to uh, identify a trend, uh, find the source of it, and alleviate churn of their customers. Another interesting story, I believe it's from Vivino, uh, and not just because I like wine, um, mostly because uh, it's, it's pretty interesting what they've been doing with Looker. Um, so essentially, uh, Vivino uh, is the wine marketplace, uh, and what they did with Looker is that they were tracing on um, how the users are rating the wine after they receive shipment. And whenever there was um, something, uh, a negative um, um, a negative review rating posted, uh, a customer alert would come into Vivino team and they would personalize a marketing offer that would keep the user uh, spending with, with them. So essentially they kept they kept on um, they kept on keeping the customers that are already in the platform and increasing their retention. Uh, and I think really the last one that I'll mention today um, would be Blue Apron. So Blue Apron uh, is essentially a meal kit delivery. So um, um, you can just order uh, a meal kit, so something to prepare and just cook it at home. And what they have done is that uh, they um, they have visi they had visibility into all of their supply chain. So um, their suppliers, um, their end customer, everything could be really view uh, in the, in uh, in Looker. So essentially, what they did is that seeing that in one of the particular meal kits was um, was returned was um, there was something wrong with it. Uh, and let's say it could be that the carrots were wrong, uh, they were just not fresh, they could just see uh, which part of the um, supplier uh, actually had uh, provided them with these carrots that were not the freshest, and they could just change it uh, or notify the supplier that this is uh, precisely happening on, on, on that end. Um, so this way, they, they ensured that their uh, customer um customer is happy and um they have the freshest meal um uh, that they can get uh so i think if you think about um what exactly looker uh can can change in your organization um this is a great example of that uh so this is example of get your guide um get your guide is essentially a platform where you can um you can book a trip somewhere um and uh, here we implemented Looker. And as you can see, let me just explain on what is in this graph. So uh, the blue line here on the bottom is the BI team. And the red line is active users. So essentially, people that are using the BI platform. Uh, the yellow line represents ad hoc requests, so how much people are asking for data. So here, uh, I think um, what, is, what is really important to notice is that when uh, they were having a previous tool, um, the ad hoc requests to the team were really over 100. There was a lot of them, and the team wasn't, the business users weren't really using the tool. Um, so when we decided to go live with Looker, um, get your guide implemented Looker, you can see that those ad hoc requests uh, really went down a lot, and the, the users, the business users, started using the BI platform uh way way more than previously so you can see really by this graph how looker empowers business users to use uh to use data on a daily basis um and here a, a real case uh from one of our customers for embedded analytics so again i was mentioning that there is internal use case and external use case for looker so this is uh the external use case so this customer is called Office R&D, and what Office R&D does is essentially they um, they have an application to manage your real estate. Uh, so they have uh, launched a data hub with us. It's powered by Looker. So as you can see here on this graph, um, they have embedded Looker within their application. So you can see on the left side that we have uh, their normal application. We have payments. We have um, 
chat uh, settings. And Looker is just a part of their application. So essentially, when you click here on analytics part, it is embedded and the, the, their customer can go into the data hub and analyze uh, you know, how much uh, revenue they get from a particular office uh, and all of the metrics that they need to make some decisions. So this is pretty much it on my side. Uh, I hope it was, uh, it was useful. Uh, I'll, I'll then give it to Charles. Oh, is my slide working? I'll give it to Charles um, to give you an actual uh, live demo of Looker um, in action. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Zusa. It's really uh, insightful overview of Looker. So again, if any questions come up during Zusa's presentation, please feel free to drop them into the chat and uh, we will address them at the end of the webinar. And now I'm excited to introduce Charlize. He will show us the demo of Looker. So Charlize, stage is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I see that my screen is there. Uh, you can see my picture from when I was young. Uh, so happy to show you a bit from Looker. So what we're going to do today is um, I will show you a bit over how how Looker looks like in practice, how we check insights in Looker and so on. Uh, the idea here is for you to get an understanding of how it works and then you have the contact of the team from Cloudfresh if you want to go deeper in details and learn more about the tool. And of course, I will be here for the Q&A. So without, uh, without further ado, I will uh, let's dive straight into the demo that will be working uh, and everything will be fine. So this is what you will see uh, once you, you, you purchase Looker platform. So what you're going to see is basically a screen with your dashboards. Now, stepping on the shoes of the team of, of, of this webinar, which is the decision makers, what you're going to do is that you will see, for instance, the highlights uh, in, a, in, in a dashboard. If you are a decision maker for marketing, you can create then a dashboard that is more dedicated for marketing and so on. Dashboarding, how it looks like on really on the top of Looker, is that you will have a simple dashboard the same way that you have dashboards in other PI tools. Uh, but then what is important here when we are talking about Looker? So everything, all the numbers that you are seeing here, these are coming straight from my database. So this means that unlike other uh, other uh, tools, it will not be querying over an extraction or anything like that. What that means for a decision maker is that this is as up to date as your data warehouse is. And what is really powerful here is that what Looker does, like Zuzo was telling us, is that Looker writes SQL scripts directly to my to my database. So it can, for instance, offer you uh, row level detail of any information that you see. So if in this case here, for instance, I see, I am seeing here uh, my my e-commerce data. I know that I had 104K orders this year. Now I go and I check the row level detail of this and I want to see now how were the sales for Calvin Klein. I could then dive deeper and see the details of those sales for Calvin Klein. So the whole point here is that you would be able to navigate through your data as you would like. You can also take actions from your data. So let's say that you are a marketing expert and based on this customer, you would like to create a profile uh, that, that would be targeted on a campaign. You can do that uh, from here or if you would like to do a, a Google search to know who's that customer. You name it, you can do it from here. Uh, that's fun, but I want to make my data work for me as well. So I want my data to not only give me insights, but you know what? I don't really like dashboarding. I don't really like entering a dashboard. I want it to work for me. So another way that you can use Looker is that whenever you have a metric, you can make that metric into an alert. 
So let's say that I am again marketing expert, and I would like to get. Uh, I would like to know whenever a campaign underperforms, so whenever a campaign gives me less than two percent conversion rate, I would like to get an email. For all the for for all the monitoring, for instance, experts here in the house. For, let's say that here you can do the same that you can do on your cloud alert. So you can make Looker. Uh, check a metric, and whenever it goes above or below a given threshold, it can send you an alert. You can also configure how that, that alert will look like and so on. If now I would like, to, for instance, to send just an insight to my shared holders, or I just want to see to send to my CEO a summary of uh, every week, how my business is doing every week, I don't need to expect them to uh to, to enter the dashboard every day i can simply come here and schedule the delivery of this dashboard for instance every week on monday at 6 a.m is a bit early so let's say 10 10 uh, a.m and what looker will do is that it will deliver this dashboard to my to my shareholders it will deliver this uh dashboard for my ceo that's also a nice strategy when you would like to make your company more data driven. So you could, for instance, instead of sending it to an email, you could send it to a Slack channel, and then your team would get every Monday a summary of how last week was. Happy with that? Ah, another thing, of course, you can create filters, and this would update all the queries that I have on my database and will bring me the most fresh uh, data. Lots of visualizations of top of the box. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We have much more under the roof working for making it possible. And whenever I see a metric here, if I want to get more insights into that metric, I can come here and dive into the explore layer. So what this layer is about is all about what we call self-servicing uh, from data. So the same way that sometimes you go to a restaurant and you can or they're in uh, your food to your table, or in some restaurants, you can go to the buffet and select your own food. Here we offer both options, and here is the buffet option. So you can go go to the to this explore interface and ask for the data by yourself. So let me just show you how that would work. So in this case here, I just see how that metric looks like, but let's get the fresh one. So now let's say that I want to know how much did I sell on the last week something as simple as that. What am I gonna do? I will come here on the left hand. I have all my tables from the database listed here. I will select uh, I will select how much, for instance, was my sales data on my sold last week, and then I will select it per day. Once I click run, what this is gonna do is that it will perform this query against my database. This is in US time, they're still sleeping, so we didn't sell anything up to now. But what we can do here is that, hey, I actually only want the last 30 complete days. What this is going to do is that it will perform this query against my database, and then it will bring me the result of how many did I sell per day on the last 30 days. What Looker did is that it wrote an SQL query for me. Do I need to know SQL to, to explore my data? No. This is just an information that you have available to you to know that Looker is actually carrying your querying over your factual data. But you know what? I want more information. I want to know how much from each campaign was brought in. Uh, so I can simply come here and select, for instance, my traffic source. And now I have something as powerful as knowing how much from each of my of my campaigns was brought in. I can see that, for instance, as a table. So now I know that for, um, for instance, on the 18th of November, my total gross margin uh, from, from email campaigns was this, and organic search was striving quite well, and then search was the most powerful one. I can do all this analysis by myself without knowing uh, anything about SQL, without bothering my without bothering my analytics team. Uh, now, 
uh, happy with that. I would just like to now win the bug a bit back and then go over making this as part of my product. So I just brought one example. Uh, Office R&D that Zusa mentioned before is a great example already of a company that took their insights and transformed it into part of their offering, part of their sales strategy, part of their product. This is another great example. So Cargo One uh, is, is a company that manages uh, Cargo. And what they did is that they started selling this data to the airlines and to the companies that use them. They did all of this. I think they, their goal was to do it uh, within 60 days or something like that. Uh, and they also had the goal to bring up 12% of their, of their income. And they used Looker for that. How can Looker help you with that? So that's when we come in with embedded piece, uh, which was that what. Uh, which was what Zusa was talking to us before. So now let's have a very quick demo of how it looks like in practice. So what I will bring you up here is, for instance, this is a simple market uh, market analysis. So what I am doing here is that I have this company called Wealth uh, Wizard that is giving me information about markets. What do I have inside here? is a fully embedded uh, looker iframe. I can, of course, customize some stuff here, like background color and so on, to adapt it to fit into my system. And here I will have all those features. What is especially powerful here is that uh, I, can, I can adapt and I can tell what my customers have access to. So if I would like, for instance, my customers to have access to alerting or not, I can, for instance, uh, give it to customers that pay more or select which services of Looker I am providing to my end customers. So that's one way that you can uh, take advantage of Looker and make it part of your product. If you would like, we also offer a very nice API so you can, for instance, have a fully customized interface of Looker, where you can, again, apply all those filters that we were playing around. And what is happening here on the background is that Looker is working as the semantic layer, is working as the interface for my product. And I am only putting my front end here. And that's really the tip oh yeah not just one more integration that you can do here is for instance I, this might take a bit to warm up uh so what what uh you can also do here is of course use the outputs of looker as part of your of your gen ai approach so in this case here we are saving all our reports into a folder and we are using uh the agent builder in order to go over and make a search on those Google on those Looker dashboards and bring a result to my end customer. So a very simple boat that you can install uh, using, using the Looker semantic layer uh, to process that information and feed the boat. Just a fun uh, example of one more powerful way of using Looker. And I believe I uh, will we'll go over the questions uh, in a bit, but I think that now it is back to Vita. Yes, thank you very much, Charlize. It was very insightful demonstration. And uh, I think that now everybody understand how powerful uh, with data can be looker. Uh, we will be happy and glad to, to answer all the questions at the end. One second, I will pin uh, the, dem uh, the presentation, uh, but one second, I will just need to figure out uh, with the clicking the slides. Maybe Anastasia, you can give me a co-presenter rights, maybe because of Charlie shared his the screen, uh, these settings stopped to work.
Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you again. Um, so now I would like to shift gears and talk about how CloudFresh can help you unlock the full potential of Luca and Google Cloud. As I mentioned before, my name is Vita and I'm sales executive in CloudFresh company. Our company is a global premier partner of uh, Google and we are helping for our customers to uh, receive the most from the products like Google Cloud and Looker as well. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, CloudFresh, we are a team of certified Google Cloud professionals with experience in architecture, data engineering, in security networking, DevOps, AppDev, and uh, more. Uh, we have a proven track of records um, of helping businesses of all sizes achieve their goals with Google Cloud. And uh, our team of certified professional experts have a deep understanding of cloud native principles. We leverage this experience to design and implement solutions that are not only efficient, but also optimized for the Google Cloud environment. This means that uh, we have a deep understanding of Google Cloud ecosystem. We can help you integrate Looker with other Google Cloud services such as BigQuery and Cloud Storage. Uh, we can also help you take advantage of Google Cloud's AI and machine learning uh, capabilities to get even more out of your data. And if you are looking for a partner to help you with your Looker implementation or with general GCP setup, we are here to help. We have, first of all, exper expertise. Second, it's experience. And the third one, it's support that uh, you need to be successful. We have also a couple of data management professional services, which we provide like BigQuery optimization, Postgres and MySQL migration to CloudSQL, and of course, Looker implementation and enablement. And I know that uh, here today we have a couple of people who are already familiar with Looker, also those of you who are using Google Cloud but not using Looker yet. And uh, maybe we have even somebody who is not using uh, not a Google Cloud and not a Looker yet, I hope so. So uh, no matter for which group, uh, on which group of people you are now, um, as a partner, we can help you uh, to receive more from this like cloud transformation and your journey. Partnering with us can bring numerous benefits to your business. Um, here are just a few of them. First of all, it's expertise. You have access to a team of certified Looker and GCP uh, experts who can help you maximize the platform's potential. We will guide you through the implementation, optimization, and outgoing support, and uh, ensuring you get the most of Looker and Google Cloud. The second one is uh, our experience. You will benefit from our proven track records of helping businesses implement and optimize Looker. The third one is support. You'll receive ongoing support ensuring that your platform runs smoothly and efficiently. Our team is available to address any questions or challenges you may have. And last but not least, uh, you, you will gain access to uh, competitive pricing for Looker and GCP services. We offer flexible payment terms and we can help you optimize your platform and licensing costs, ensuring that you get the best value of your investment. By partnering with us, um, you're not just getting a Looker implementation partner or GCP partner, you're gaining a trusted advisor who will work closely with you to achieve your business objectives. And of course, maybe you are interested in like what next? Uh, so we uh, propose such a flow. Uh, it was the QR, which was also at the beginning of our today's presentation. So 
I uh, want to ask you to scan this QR code to get in touch with us. Uh, we will set up a call with you, discuss your needs and goals, and then we will provide for you a personalized demo of Looker Core, which will be tailored for your needs. We understand that every company have different business, different challenges, different needs, goals, and etc. That's why we will be glad to show for you how it will work in your business, what benefits you will get at the end. And the last stage, we also will be glad to provide for you a proof of concept or trial for you to be able to try uh, this solution if you are not using Looker Core yet, to try it into your business, to your data. And now I would like to uh, switch to our Q&A session. I saw that we have a couple of interesting questions. Um, during the Zuza's presentation and also during the Charlie's presentation. So I will start. I think that the first question was from Anatoly Kirichenko. He asked, does Embedded Explorer require authentication or it's powered uh, through API key? Under authentication, I mean Looker users, views, uh, viewers and users. Yeah, uh, I collected a few of the questions here. I will be uh, pasting the answers on the chat as well. But it's good, uh, very, uh, very, very good question. So first, uh, about the the, exp the embedded explore uh, authentication, uh, I pasted the answer in the chat. So uh, we need a little as uh, what we call an SSO, so a little call to the API to get a secure link to embed and make sure that your customer only sees what they are supposed to see. Um, and then can can I move on to the next question? Yes, yes, uh, of course. Uh, about the SQL, so like um, the next question was how how can it uh, write if it can write SQL from a text. So the answer is, uh, I'm, I'm pasting again the documentation, uh, is yes and no. So it can paste, uh, it cannot by default create an SQL query from a text, but then I just pasted an open source initiative, we call it the Explore Assistant, that does exactly that. So it transforms a text question into, into a LookML query uh, and you can explore, you can take a look on GitHub, uh, taking your time. And then the other question uh, was very interesting about how, how does Looker make sure, for instance, that uh, the users will choose the correct fields for analysis and then that the final answer is clear and correct? Uh, very, very good question. I think we didn't have the time to go over uh, the exact way that Looker works, that would be very interesting if you if you want to have this end result to your customers to go on a deeper conversation. But this is done through what we call LookML that I saw some people already know. So it is a modeling layer. Um, again, pasting the response there with the link. Um, and then the other one that uh, was another very great question from Lucas was about uh, more delicate cases like banking and so on. Again, uh, I highly recommend that we sit together and evaluate that uh, together to make sure that we can address that. Uh, all in all, Looker Studio is not really the way to go for more strict uh, data data companies like banking and telecommunications, for instance, what we will then recommend is to go to Looker Core that can provide you a fully managed uh, instance that would then be able to be exposed only on private IP. And you could then, of course, select the region where that goes. So I'm again uh, pasting the the answer here on the chat with the documentation oh the chat doesn't allow me to i'll paste only the 
only the answer with the Looker private IP. But again, that would be cool to be discussed uh, with, with uh, Cloud Fresh, and and then Cloud Fresh would bring us to this conversation. Uh, and then I saw that more questions came in. Um, So okay, very good question about uh, about optimizing the the LookML models. Uh, I have one. Uh, we have, of course, you have CloudFresh to to review your LookML with you uh, in in and to assist you on the long term, and they can also make you a bridge with another partner of ours that is Spectacles. And they have a software that is done specifically for improving uh, LookML readability and 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 debugging LookML for bigger organizations. So again, uh, ideally, uh, we would sit together and and define this strategy with uh, with you. Um, and well. Uh, uh, no, is there any DAX? Thank you no, for this question as well. Is there any DAX language analog that would allow to perform complex calculations on data? So, like, like Looker, like uh, Zuzo was telling us since the beginning, Looker is strongly based on SQL. Anything that you can calculate on SQL, you can program the LookML to do for you. Um, so DAX, if I'm not wrong, is the Power BI version of modeling. And what we have in Looker is that we have the LookML, which is more based on SQL than DAX is. Um, so it will be pretty much the same documentation that I shared before about, about the Looker modeling layer. That's all that also support liquid variables and very advanced configurations. I would recommend starting from that to understand better how how the modeling of Looker works. Um, can we discuss newly added to Looker Open SQL interface and how business? I am not sure I understood this question. And I also. Yeah, I can maybe comment here that uh, we can connect with Anatolia after the webinar and uh, maybe discuss this option of uh, OpenSQL yeah. interface. Maybe it's the new interface, uh, Charlize, which you showed today. I think that maybe it's what Anatoly um, meant. Yeah, and, and also for the Postgres, uh, maybe uh, it should uh, I would also recommend them taking a look uh, together. It should be working. Uh, I, I don't know exactly. I cannot identify what is the error just by I, I cannot connect. So I would highly recommend reaching out to the team uh, and getting that uh, up and running. I rushed through the, through the questions, but I hope uh, the documentation talks much better than I do. So uh, I hope you refer to that. Thank you very much for your answers, uh, Charlie. So, uh, because mostly all the questions was uh, for you, I would like to ask you to choose uh, two winners. So, uh, the questions, two best questions. I will go for the people who I admire that paid a lot of attention. So, um, I I go for. Anna, yeah, Anna. Anna Tkachenko. There we go. And then to Lucas. Lucas, that's the end. Congratulations, yay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I will ask uh, Anna and uh, Lucas to send us an email with your data, with your address. Uh, to the email which is uh, uh, currently on the slide. We will contact with you and we will send you your gifts. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, the end of our webinar. As a lot of questions uh, was like, uh, I can say some on which we can 
answer um, after some deep dive into um, conversation with you i would like to ask you again to scan the qr code to contact with us and uh, if some of the questions was not covered today um, please let us know and we will be happy to cover them later uh, after this webinar and thank you everybody for your attention for your questions and joining us today and i wish everybody a great day and week ahead